Hello everyone. In this video, we'll discuss about the binding mechanism of oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide with hemoglobin. So, in our previous videos, we have already discuss uh, discuss the valences of iron, which is present in the heme, and four valences has been satisfied by nitrogen atoms of pyrrole rings, and fifth by the histidine. a uh, group of uh, attached to the globin chain and six valency by the uh, oxygen atom right so here oxygen which is bound to the ferrous atom i mean ferrous form of iron of the heme to form oxyhemoglobin and hydrogen which is bound to r groups that means functional groups of side chain of globin especially of histidine residues of alpha and beta chains right and this sort of binding mainly useful in buffering mechanism okay buffering activity as we mentioned apart from gas uh, gases transportation okay hemoglobin is one of the buffering molecule okay so to resist the acid base changes inside the cell this attachment of hydrogens to the globin chains of hemoglobin is very important okay and carbon dioxide which is produced because of the cellular respiration uh, from peripheral i mean tissues and cell level cellular level to lungs how it will be when carbon dioxide bound to internal end of each of the globin chain of hemoglobin to form carbamino hemoglobin so in this picture you can make out here so c terminal of globin chain which is consisting carboxylic group and it has consist amino group so we are all aware globin chains are nothing but protein okay so each protein is having carboxy terminal and amino terminal right so here the carbon dioxide which is produced at cellular level attached to the amino terminal end of the uh, globin chain and forms carbamino hemoglobin okay carbamino form of globin chain which may attach to alpha chain of the hemoglobin which may attach to alpha globin chain of the hemoglobin okay and when uh, to discuss about the binding of oxygen to hemoglobin okay so it's always been discussed in the form of two forms okay tense that means capital t relaxed capital r forms of hemoglobin okay here deoxy hemoglobin that means hemoglobin without oxygen okay is known as tense r tau r stressed form of hemoglobin and oxy hemoglobin when hemoglobin attached or bind to oxygen okay that is known as relaxed form of hemoglobin so whenever you explain we were explaining the mechanism of binding of oxygen to hemoglobin these are the two forms you should aware okay one is t that is tense or taut or stressed form other one is r that means relaxed form of hemoglobin so so the diagrammatic representation of t and r forms okay you see here so the red colors like globin chains and each globin chain carries a heme that is green in color okay so all these globin chains are joined by non covalent bonds such as hydrogen salt bonds okay and ionic bonds van der waals forces so when there is attachment of oxygen okay when there is attachment of oxygen okay the deoxy hemoglobin the t form converted to oxy hemoglobin or relaxed form how it is possible okay when there is attachment of oxygen to heme part of the globin hemoglobin okay so the bonds will there is breakage of bonds okay these non covalent bonds salt bridges hydrogen bond will be broken okay so all the globin chains are again pulled together okay they will be tightly i mean that means whatever the uh globin chains are tightly pulling together pulled together which will be in relaxed form okay and this tightness of all this because of non covalent bonds but the the binding of oxygen to heme molecule breaks all these bonds and it relaxes the globin chain okay so that's why it is known as relaxed form of hemoglobin that is oxy hemoglobin so you see here if you see a three molecular three dimensional point of view of uh, like uh, heme inside a globin chain so before attachment of if you take a plane okay if you make a graphical or a plane uh, plane okay so here 
plane of heme molecule okay before attachment of oxygen okay it is below 0.06 nanometers okay when there is attachment of oxygen it pulls up the iron molecule to the center and it causes the breakage of bonds and converting the stress form of uh, hemoglobin into relaxed form of hemoglobin that is oxyhemoglobin you see here the distance stress form is having 0.06 nanometers from the center plane of the ring okay so when there is presence of oxygen it is quite at the center so a molecule of o2 which is bound first by alpha chain whose heme pockets are more readily accessible because beta pockets are uh, beta chains are packed inside so we are all uh, aware the structure of hemoglobin is a quaternary structure it is of four polypeptide chains two alpha chains outside two beta chains inside so here the chain which is outside like alpha chain so that the heme which is present in alpha chain accepts the oxygen okay so that it will give feasibility to the other chains globin chains to expose their heme so that other molecules of oxygen can go and bind okay so heme pockets of beta chains are blocked by valine residues okay and these uh, valine residues prevent the oxygen binding first so that that's the reason why oxygen molecules will bind to alpha chains first okay and binding of oxygen is accompanied by rupture of salt bonds of all four subunits and protons are generated okay so binding of oxygen as i mentioned earlier binding of oxygen okay breaks the salt bonds okay on all, all four subunits and protons are generated so the changes okay which are like altering the hemoglobin secondary tertiary and quaternary structures leads to widening of heme pockets okay as i mentioned non covalent breakage leads to disturbance to secondary tertiary and quaternary structure okay so as i said okay these globin chains arranged in pockets okay and these pockets are tightly closed okay so when there is presence of oxygen when there is binding of oxygen to alpha chain so there is widening of this heme pockets okay and the remaining subunits facilitates the binding of o2 to the subunits the rest of the subunits as a result stressed or t form of the deoxyhemoglobin converted to relaxed form of oxyhemoglobin what is cooperative oxygen binding of hemoglobin okay so this uh, we will discuss in the next slide thanks for listening thank you